What is Kubernetes? Kubernetes allows you to run your Docker containers at scale and automatically restart them if they fail health check. If your application is written for Kubernetes, you can spin up a Kubernetes cluster basically anywhere, bare metal or public cloud or hybrid cloud, and scale your application out across clusters, across cloud. Kubernetes is Greek for captain of the ship. It gives us the words cybernetic and gubernatorial. On the Kubernetes homepage, I'm going to go to documentation, and we are a user, and we are going to go through as an application developer, and we want to get started with a cluster. The recommended way to develop locally is with Minikube. If we go to install Minikube, and if you do not already have a hypervisor installed, install the appropriate one. We're going to use VirtualBox. So I go here to the VirtualBox website, and then Downloads, and then OSX Hosts. And once this opens up, it tells you to double click on this and you'll get a prompt here. Just hit continue, continue, install, and enter your password. Installation was successful. You can go ahead and close out of that, move the installer to the trash. And if we go here, you should see VirtualBox is installed on your machine. So VirtualBox is installed. And we don't need to do anything directly with VirtualBox, so we'll close out of that and close out of here. And the next step is to install kubectl or cube controller. Go to those instructions here. And what kubectl does is it controls Kubernetes clusters locally. You could also use this to control a remote cluster. I am on Mac, so I'm going to copy this and open up a terminal. And we're going to do brew install Kubernetes hyphen CLI. And it looks like I'm getting an error here because I had an old version installed. And if we read here, it says try doing brew upgrade Kubernetes CLI. If you're installing this for the first time, you should not get that error. So I'm going to go ahead and Google this. This person said they did brew update, brew unlink git, and brew install git. Brew update, brew unlink git, and brew install git. Now we'll do brew upgrade Kubernetes CLI. And we're still getting the same error. So let's try what this person recommends. And it looks like that time it worked. So now it says test to ensure the version you installed is sufficiently up to date. So we'll do kubectl version. And eventually that comes back with a client version. So it looks like we're on major version 1, minor version 12. It's unable to connect to a server that there was a I.O. timeout. So it looks like it's installed. And in order for kubectl to find and access a Kubernetes cluster, it needs a kube config file. We'll go ahead and create that. So back on the install minikube documentation, if we scroll down, we've completed these steps. We've installed kubectl and minikube, and under what's next, running a Kubernetes cluster locally via minikube. We'll come here to this documentation, and if you scroll down, you see you should be able to go ahead and basically run minikube start. This seems to be not going very quickly. There may be a known issue, and someone recommends adding verbose logs. It's doing some stuff using an SSH client, and here it looks like it's about to run an SSH command, and we see exit zero. That's a little odd.
So I'm thinking maybe we have a bad cluster in here, so I deleted and then started again to see if that helps. And I see something here in VirtualBox, Minikube running. So we'll go ahead and give that a minute, and maybe we can show this here and see some more info. So it looks like here we have a machine up and running, and it looks like starting cluster components is being logged to the terminal here. So it's doing stuff. Looks like kubectl is now configured to use this local cluster, and it's loaded the cached images from the config file. So now we should be able to run this command, kubectl ctl run hello minikube image equals k8s.gcr, which is the Google Container Registry, dot io, slash echo server, colon 1 dot 10, dash dash port, equals 8080, and it's letting us know deployment was created. Uh, here it says that this command is actually deprecated and will be removed in the future. Well, that's what the documentation tells us to run. And now we'll go ahead and do kubectl expose deployment hello minikube and type is going to be node port. What that basically means is we're going to take this node like a, a node uh, is a server, an actual physical server, in this case it's my laptop, um, and just expose that container on a port there. Um, some other types of deployments are like load balancers and things like that. So Minikube, it was, or uh, this hello Minikube was exposed, uh, which means we now can access it from the outside, or uh, in this case my local laptop. So if we do kubectl git pod, CTL get pod. We can see that there is one pod running. It has this name. If we curl the minikube URL, um, we'll basically access it. And what this is doing here is it's going to run a command inside of a command. So that stuff in the dollar sign um, parentheses there actually just gets you the address here. And then you can pass that to curl. You could actually copy paste this in and we see we curled that IP address which is my local IP address and then the port where it's exposed and we get back a bunch of information which is coming from the docker container itself. Uh, you could also run this whole command just like this so that you don't have to copy and paste and run two separate commands. And when we're done, we can delete this with kubectl delete services hello minikube. The service is deleted. Then we can delete the deployment. So kubectl delete deployment hello minikube. And it tells us deployment hello minikube was deleted. And if we want to shut down the local Kubernetes cluster, you can run minikube stop.